So this is the bandsaw. The bandsaw is one of the most versatile and powerful tools in the shop. If you only had one power tool, maybe the power tool you would want to start with is the bandsaw. It can do almost anything. It can cut long, straight things that make really regular boards. It can cut super crazy curves. It's a really incredible tool. So the blade of the bandsaw is basically a continuous circuit, and it's on these two wheels, like the gears of a bike. So the blade is continuously passing down through the table at this point, and it's making a long, continuous cut along that circuit. That's how the tool works. When I come up to the bandsaw, I'm going to do my pre-flight check. There's a couple of things about the bandsaw setup that I want to check before I get started. The first is, I want to make sure that the table surface in the area around the bandsaw is clear of any tools or scrap. It's all clear and ready to go. This is my blade guard. I want to make sure that the blade guard is lowered down to the thickness of the material I'm working with. I don't want any extra blade exposed. On this machine, there's a locking knob right here, and there's a knob on the back of the um, upper, upper uh, wheel cabinet that I use to turn to raise and lower the blade. If I just release the lock, the guard is gonna slam down on the table. So I wanna keep one hand on the knob back here and use my other hand to release the lock. Then I can gently lower the guard I want the guard to be about an eighth of an inch above the work surface. I want to make sure I can slide the workpiece back and forth. It's not rubbing against the guard, but it's very low down to the table. Once I get it to the right height, I'm just going to lock the knob back down, and I'm good to go. I can double check by sliding the workpiece down, oops, sorry, under the guard. I want to make sure that there's enough clearance behind the blade to push the stock all the way through. And I also want to make sure um, that the blade is tensioned, it's tracking correctly, my blade guard is in place. If anything feels off to you, check in with a monitor or a manager or your instructor. And that's true of like any of the tools. Like if you hear a weird sound or anything feels rattly or loose, if you have any questions, any uncertainty, please ask us. We're here to help. Don't make any adjustments to the tracking or tensioning of the blade yourself. These are really delicate. So, similar to the miter saw that we looked at before, I always want my workpiece to be stabilized against this table. I want to make sure my workpiece is held firmly against the table. And I'm never going to saw something that doesn't have a flat surface that I can run against the table. The bandsaw is always exerting a downward thrust on the workpiece. Remember we talked about the bandsaw is this continuous circuit that's always passing down through the table. So as it's cutting, it's also pulling on the workpiece. That's really good because what it means is as the workpiece is being cut, it's also being stabilized. It's being held against this table. But if you have a workpiece with an irregular uh, base, something that doesn't have that flat surface you can ride against the table, you're in danger because the bandsaw can grab the workpiece with an unflat base and it'll pull it out of your hands. It's very unsafe. So I always want to make sure that everything you run on the bandsaw has a flat base that you can run on this flat table. Your workpiece is always in contact with the table at the point where the blade exits. So at this point where the blade is making the cut, your workpiece is always in contact with the table. I would never uh, try to run something on its edge or try to freehand the cut up off the table because it's very dangerous. I'm going to keep my head, arms, hands, and fingers away from the path of the blade. That means I don't want to um, bring anything within uh, about about four to six inches away from the blade. I think like a good rule of thumb is like this distance, like my, the span of my finger. That's about how far away I want to stay away from the blade. I want to avoid awkward operations and hand positions where a sudden slip could cause your hand to move into the blade. The way I try to visualize this is I want to think where would my hands go if the wood suddenly disappeared? So if I'm pushing a workpiece through the, through the saw and I'm pushing over here, if the wood disappeared, my hands would pass safely past the blade. But if I'm forcing my hands toward the blade and the workpiece suddenly disappeared, my hands are going to go right into the blade. 
that's the mindset I have when I'm working on basically any of the tools in the shop. Where would my hands go if the wood suddenly disappeared? That's always going to keep you safe. If you're cutting a narrow stock, you want to use a push stick like we did on the jointer. Um, don't place your thumb at the end of a piece of stock while you're pushing it through the blade. Wood density varies and while you may think you have control of the speed and expect to be able to move your thumb out of the way, the stock could suddenly surge forward and you may inadvertently push your thumb into the blade. Use a moderate feed rate and decrease the feed rate as you approach the end of the cut. So we'll go over that a little more when we actually go to make our cuts. But for now, there's, this, there's a wall of push sticks right next to the bandsaw over here. Um, different styles and, and uh, shapes for different operations. And you can see these push sticks, they're kind of chewed up on the end, right? This push stick like hit the, the, the blade. That's fine, that's normal. That's what these are for. This hits the blade so your hands don't have to. Um, I'm gonna use a push stick. Uh, when I use a push stick with my workpiece, I'm gonna uh, hook the notch on the end of the piece and use that uh, notch to guide my board through the saw. The bandsaw can cut curves, but there's a limit to how tight of a curve the bandsaw can cut. Don't force the bandsaw to cut a curve that's smaller than it can make. We have a couple different bandsaws in the shop. Some have a narrow blade, some have a wide blade. The wide blades are good for long straight cuts. The narrow blades are good for intricate curves. Choose the right blade for your application. When you're making curves, you're gonna to wanna to make relief cuts. We'll go over relief cuts more uh, when, we, when we're in the shop together. But you always wanna plan your cuts to avoid backing out of the saw curve. In general with the bandsaw, you want to avoid backing out of the cut. That's because the blade considers get pinched, and it can actually pull off the wheels. It can damage the blade, and it's not safe. If you absolutely have to back out of a cut, you want to turn the saw off first. Wait for it to come to a stop, and then back out of the saw. That's the safe way to do it. Before you make any adjustments to the blade guard, before you clean up, before you remove debris, before you secure a workpiece, before you change the angle of the table, any adjustment, any change, you're going to turn the bandsaw off. And just like other tools in the shop, once the bandsaw is turned off, the blade can still be coasting silently. It's still moving. It's still cutting. It's still dangerous. So you want to make sure that the blade has really come to a complete stop before you make any changes. If you're never doing any layout, assembly, setup work on the table area while the saw is running, again, I would say just don't do it at all. Just keep this. Uh, table only for using the bandsaw. Uh, the area to the right of the bandsaw, it's a danger zone. Sometimes these blades can break once in a while. The big circuit of the, of the blade can snap and the blade is going to come shooting out of the saw to the right. That's very rare, but it does happen sometimes. So you never want to be standing right here, right to the right of the saw. Because if the blade shoots out, it's going to hit my body. Never touch the blade without turning off the machine and sticking a piece of wood against the blade to make sure it's really stopped. Don't trust your eyes. The blade moves so fast that it can look like it isn't moving. When your work's complete, you're gonna turn off the machine, clean up your work area, and remove all your stock and scraps. No shortcuts in woodworking. When you're beginning to work on the bandsaw, you gotta prepare yourself mentally for the pace of work that is slower, more deliberate, and safety conscious. Accept the fact that everything will take longer than you think. Always err on the side of caution. Familiarity with the bandsaw breeds confidence and competence, so practice often and ask questions to get help as you need. So now let's take a look at making a cut on the bandsaw. I've already adjusted my guard to match the thickness of my workpiece. I can slide it underneath, no problem. This bandsaw has a, this long uh, straight fence, which is going to help me make a perfectly straight cut. If I run a smooth straight edge against my fence, the bandsaw will make a smooth straight parallel cut on the opposite side. So the first thing I want to do is move this fence to the right position for the cut that I want to make. Underneath the fence, right over here, there's a little uh, label, in case you forget, and a beautiful yellow cord. You're gonna release this uh, knob, which is gonna loosen the fence and allow me to slide it back and forth. 
So I can slide the fence back and forth so I'm both in the right spot. And when I'm done adjusting the fence to the right spot, I'm going to tighten that knob back down. I don't want the fence to slip and slide while I'm making a cut. I want to make sure it's secured. So I can check that by giving it a light wiggle, and it's totally fine. Everything is good. Now I'm ready to make my first cut. So I'm going to use a push stick on this cut. I'm going to hook the notch of the push stick on the back of my piece. And I'm going to support the piece on the opposite side with my left hand. It's just helping guide the piece and helping me feel like I'm really secure and locked into the workpiece. I'm just going to push this all the way through. And when I complete the cut, I'm going to push the workpiece all the way past the saw to make sure I have clearance. Can I take the glasses? When I turn on the saw, just like some of the other tools in the shop, I'm going to turn this uh, red handle. I'm sorry, I'm going to pull this red handle out. And then I'm going to press the green button. Again, I want to make sure that my workpiece is not touching the blade when I turn on the saw. With all the tools in the shop, your workpiece is never touching the machine when you turn it on. You're going to let the machine come to full speed, and then you're going to engage the cut. So my workpiece is pulled away, ready to go. Side of the saw that is going to uh, is like the emergency. It's the, it's, sorry, it's the shutoff for the saw. That's the easiest way to turn off the saw. 